But we are gonna spill all the beans. Trust me, we are gonna be spilling those beans, spilling the beans. Okay, look at my hair. I want you to look at my hair, right? Now, admittedly, I'm a little ratchet because I don't want to say how many weeks it's been since I have been here. Let's not talk about that. Because <laughs> y'all gonna be judging me. You know you're gonna be judging me. When you discover how many weeks it's been since I've been. Okay, so can you see my hair? And it's my hair, because you can see it's an afro right at the root. Yeah, no, no, no tracks, no nothing. This is my hair, right? In fact, it's <laughs> when it gets wet to the back, it's already gone back to an afro. Um, but <laughs> you can see it, right? You can see it? Can you see it? Are you seeing all the way where the hair goes? Yeah? Okay, let's see. Right, right. All right. So now we are going to wash my hair. That's what Tiffany's gonna do. And she, we're gonna talk about how best to take care of Afro hair, black people's hair. And then we're gonna show you how to look, not ratchet like this, but how to look like a million dollars if you're gonna heat straighten and make your hair straight, all right? Ratchet, not clatchet, but classy. Right? Yeah, that's what we'll do. I like that phrase. <laughs> Tell us again. Clatchet. You don't want to do that. No ratchet, no clatchet, but classy. That's what we want. That's what we want. Yeah. Oh no, well, you know, I'll be hard pressed to do the classy <laughs> thing, but never mind. All right, we're about to begin. So look at us now, and I'll hold up the mic for Tiffany so you can get all of her wisdom. Awesome. So Miss Kara here has natural hair, but we, we have done highlights in her hair, and I don't know if you can see the um, multidimensional tones that we have going in her hair. And you can see right here where her natural texture has started to pretty much come through. And her ends, we've heat styled before, so they're a little straighter. So now we're about to just shampoo. And one thing about Kara's hair is, and you'll see it revert. As we shampoo, as we get this hair wet, you're going to see the difference in texture happen right before your eyes. Kara's hair is not very coarse. It's actually very soft. Um, and her curl texture, it's tighter toward the root, it's looser toward the end, and once again, you'll see this a little more so once her hair is completely washed and all this oil is off of it. But because she's color treated and natural, we wanna make sure to really moisturize the hair because that's the secret to keeping, whether you're natural, relaxed, whatever it is, that's the secret to keeping that hair growing and keeping it healthy. And it's really, I mean, this hair, I mean, it, has grow, it grows like wildfire, doesn't it? It grows like weeds. It grows like weeds. <laughs> we also do a base color on Kara, and we, we pretty much have to color her about every four to six weeks. It depends on our schedules. Yeah, because you know, truth be told, I mean, listen, I'll tell you, hey, you know, camera, come, and, come to my face, camera, just for a second. Let me just tell you, basically, just because you and I are friends, I'll tell you, there have been times when I have not darkened Tiffany's door for four weeks or more. And I don't do anything in between, so let's not talk about it. Don't remind me I told you. Judgment. All right. Judgment is happening right now. So true. And, and I realistically or idealistically, ladies, you should come into your salon about every week to every two weeks. And it really just depends on, once again, your at-home maintenance, your texture, kind of what you're going for. But for a Kara, I would recommend probably about once a week. Oh. <laughs> Look at you. Is that too much of a commitment? Boy, once a week. And I just even, oh man, oh, I forget. Like, I'm just like, oh Lord. Oh my goodness, hold on a second. I, I'm, gonna, I'm holding this light up. Hold on, let me put this. Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay. And you guys can start to see, once again, you can start to see the difference in her texture, the difference in her curl. I don't know if you can get all that. We gotta make sure we get those edges, ladies. Okay, you know what, let me, let me, let me. Technical difficulties. Okay, no, we got it. Perfect, so we're gonna do two shampoos. Your first shampoo usually gets off a lot of the, um, the surface oil and things like that. The second just kind of make sure that the, the canvas that we're about to work on is nice and clean. So her hair will bounce and behave and not be so stiff. The worst thing, ladies, honestly, is when you go to the salon and you get your hair pressed and all that kind of stuff, and it ends up looking like grease stuck to your face. <laughs> it's not cute, we don't want that look. We want it to move, we want it to flow. So you don't want a greasy look? No, that's more ratchet. You know, we want, it, we want to get into the classy. 
But what about when people say, but we're supposed to have a whole load of oil on our hair and that, that's going to protect it and all of this? It's, this is the thing. Everyone does need oil. We even produce natural oils. However, every hair type needs different things and you don't need to cake it up. And that's with any natural girl with a whole bunch of oil, especially if you're wearing it straight. Because now mm. your natural oil is able to move from your root to your ends easily when it's straight. When it's curly, not so much. So are you seeing the curl? Are, are you seeing the curl when you're looking right now at me? Are you seeing how I came in with heat straightened hair and how the curl is coming? It's going down. Yeah. <laughs> We're going down. <laughs> Look at the are curl. Right now? Yeah. Good. I love it. Work it. getting curly it's getting curly even on the even on the camera lens we're seeing a bit of that shampoo yeah that's right <laughs> Woo -hoo! we're getting down and dirty over here that's right literally. making sure we get all underneath <laughs> oh my goodness. making sure everything is clean see that see that look at that oh my goodness are you seeing it come close come close come close see this hair See what's going on. <laughs> you seeing it? Is there enough light for you to see it? All right, now let's go ahead and rinse you out. Huh? All right, how's the first shampoo? This is the second shampoo. Oh. You missed the first one, girl. <laughs> okay. So now we rinse it all out, and then we move on to our conditioner. And once again, even though Kara's hair is on the finer side, I still want to give her moisture. I still need to make sure I, I use something that's heavy enough to compensate for the fact that we do use some kind of color in her hair. Let me just get over here real quick. And so what about if people are saying, you know, I've got a different hair texture, mine is more fine, less fine, whatever. What can be done for me? Someone's at home going, I want to know what, what, where I stand, what I need to do to grow my hair, keep it healthy, grow it long. What would you say to them? Certain, certain principles are universal. So once again, moisture is universal. Whether you have finer hair or whether you have thick, coarse hair, it doesn't matter. You need to moisturize. Um, now the product that you're going to use, both your shampoo and conditioner might be different than um, you know, someone who has finer hair as opposed to you know, really coarse hair. So break it down, break it down for us. Like what do you mean, what, what, what would you do if your hair is thicker, well, what is it thicker? When you say coarse, you mean each strand is thicker? Each strand is thicker. When I say coarse, I, do, I don't mean that it necessarily is super curly because you can have super curly hair and have it be super fine and fragile also. What I mean by that is the actual strand is super thick, right? So when you have hair like that, and once again, you just are going to, it's, it's harder for moisture and things like that to penetrate. So you're gonna lean more toward your hydrating shampoos and conditioners and things like that. Now when you have medium textured hair. Wait, what, what do you look for? When you've got hydrating shampoo, what are you looking for um, on the bottle? What, what are you looking for in the store? What are you looking for? I mean, there are several different ingredients that you can kind of, especially for curly girls, your, um, your shea butters are a little heavier if you have coarser hair. If you have like a medium textured or even a finer hair, coconut oil. That's something that's, I mean, it's an amazing natural thing that we all have, but a lot of beauty uh, products do incorporate those ingredients into their, their product lines because of their strength and because of, you know, what they do for different people. I get you, I get you. So basically, I'm looking for um, shea butter. Shea if butter, you're looking for um, just, even jojoba oils, things like that, when you have a coarser texture. When you have finer texture, you're looking definitely into your coconut oils, you're looking into your um, different, just different lighter types of oils, even avocado, things like that. It really I, works well. So I get it, so basically what you're doing is, if your hair is really fine, you don't necessarily want something too heavy to weigh it down, but if your hair is, each strand is thicker and, and coarser and gorgeous, right. you know, what, you, what you're looking for is those, go those gorgeous, heavy shea heavy butter. Richer. Exactly, right. because that's what's going to give you nine times out of 10 the moisture that you need. 
and everybody, like I said, is so different and so individual, but those are usually certain principles that you stick to. And even if you have, you know, once again, coarser texture, um, you want to make sure you, you do shampoo because that's mm -hmm. a lot of natural girls sometimes, you know, they don't like to shampoo. Yeah. And I know those natural girls who don't like to shampoo. Let's talk about them hypothetically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I won't name any names. Don't name those names. I don't judge <laughs> at all. But um, yeah, you, you should shampoo once a week or twice or once every two, excuse me, two weeks. And that's because you got to get all that stuff off your scalp. You got to cleanse that hair because it does help your scalp to breathe. And essentially, you know, it helps it to grow. And that, that manipulation is also really good because that stimulates um, circulation. So even brushing your hair, like, you know, just even massaging. Wait, 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 wait. Brushing your hair like Rapunzel? Brushing your hair like a, Listen, like a. You got to get to that scalp. You got to take that brush and you got to get to that scalp. And if you're a natural girl, that's okay too. If you don't want to mess up those curls, you just got to, you got to massage. You got to make love to that scalp. So I get it. So you're massaging, making love to your scalp. And the reason you're doing that, the reason you're doing that is because you're trying to get the circulation going and so I guess for those women with some follicle damage because of weaves and chemicals they've been using maybe that's quite good too exactly it's perfect it's perfect and that's really the way um, that keeps that like I said circulation going which in turn helps to grow your hair so yeah those are those are some basics and once we get this conditioner off we're gonna get into a little bit more of how to get that bouncing body without looking like you just, you know, put a whole bunch of oil on that head, like I said. You mean without looking like you were frying chicken on your own head? Oh, well, exactly. We don't want the fried chicken. <laughs> fried chicken. Get fried chicken out of here. <laughs> Get that fried chicken out. So you're saying that having the hair healthy, so this is, you're combing the conditioner through. Is that is that a tip that you want to tell other people to do? Oh, yeah. Um, when your conditioner is, this is the best time to comb hair. And you notice that, you know, there is some shedding and things like that, but that's natural. Your hair sheds at least about 150 hairs a day. It's very natural. It's very normal. And with any kind of hair, whether it's textured or straight, a, a big comb like this is actually better. It doesn't put as much tension. And you notice that I have the ends of her hair in my hand. And I'm combing that first, and then I make my way up so that I'm not ripping her hair from the root to the end. That's detrimental. We, we don't want to break anything off. We just want to keep it healthy, and we want to keep it happy. We like happy hair. So can I underline that point? Because that's really great. You're saying that you're combing the hair from the ends to the root, not the other way around. Exactly. Exactly. And then by the time you get to the root, it's just, look at this. It's easy. What? It's Easy. And if you see, once again, hair in the comb, it's normal. Mm -hmm. If you don't brush your hair every day, even if you do brush it every day, it's normal to see shedding. It's just different when you see little short pieces and things like mm -hmm. that. Then that's a sign of breakage. That's something different. But that's not what we're worrying about no. today. Speaking of breakage, I want to say that in the past, when I've tried putting chemicals in my hair, whether it be a straightening chemical or a texturizing chemical in the past, past, what I discovered was my hair would break. Yeah. I would get some serious dandruff and my hair would be breaking. And now, because my hair is completely natural now, not breaking, just growing like a, like a weed. Yeah, and the thing about it is I don't, I love natural hair and if you know, someone wants to relax her, I don't say it's the wrong thing, but it's all a matter of how are you taking care of it? Mm -hmm. And does it, is it the best option for your lifestyle? Because everything has its place, but when you start getting in that kitchen, and you start, you know, using those, you know, at-home relaxer kits and things like that, you're bound to run into issues and things like that. And when you start trying to do color and relaxer and, you know, you're just not on that, that routine and, and all that kind of stuff, it, it spells disaster for your hair, seriously. So, so, you mean, actually, I mean, I once was in a situation where, um, and I'll wait for the camera to come down, I was in a situation where I borrowed my mother's shampoo. I had a full long head of hair just like this, and I borrowed mommy's shampoo. I'd taken my hair just out of braids, and I didn't realize it was a coloring kind of stripping shampoo. And I washed my hair twice or three times with the shampoo, and then I had Naya Bingi locks. My whole hair had glued together, and I had to cut it off. I had to cut it off by the root. Well, listen, I'm a hairstylist, mm. and I've had the same experience. So when I was younger, right, I was always in the hair. I've been doing hair since I was about 12 years old. I am 30, okay, so that's yeah. a long time. 
And I remember going through this experimental phase, like I really wonder what the differences are in these shampoos. Like why am I, you know, spending this amount of money and why is this happening opposed? So I went out and I got those good smelling shampoos, the Dove, I got Bath and Body Works. This is when I was a teenager. Um, and all those things, fruit teas. And I said, well, let me try this out because I'm natural. And I used it and girl, my hair was matted. It was the driest situation. Everyone was like, broom. And I was like, oh my God, I can't do it. I can't do it. So I had to put on tons of conditioner. You remember the old school cholesterol? I even went that route. So um, ladies and gentlemen, the shampoos and conditioners that you use do matter. Um, you just have to find something once again that works for your texture because those are the most integral pieces and your hair routine that you're gonna have. They are integral to the health of your hair. So, that's a good point. Well, that's, that's, yeah. Let me ask a question about, now you're talking about shampoos, right? Yeah. Let me ask a question about, sorry, look at us. I should be paying, <laughs> I should, you're there at home. I should be paying you mind. Instead of the thing I'm just thinking about, I, yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm stretching out. Yeah, because I'm like, because basically, I know you want to know about co-washing. So we want to know, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, so we're, we're here, we're turning. And you know what, I just want to highlight too that the reason why you experienced what you experienced and I did also uh -huh. with um, those shampoos was basically oh, Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're not hearing you yet. Okay. Okay, so. Oh. The reason why you were experiencing what you experienced with the dryness and all those things are because of the amount of, sometimes alcohols that are in the shampoos and conditioners. Um, oh, there we go. And um, beside that, a lot of the times, um, shampoos will contain certain types of um, cleansers. Some are more abrasive than others. Some are more drying than others. And a lot of the times, the reason why you only pay um, let's say six dollars for some shampoo is because of the the ingredients and the um, the quality of ingredients that are in those products so for some curly girls they'll say like um, suave is amazing right but really what it does is it coats your hair with different waxes or different things like this and over time it makes it harder for a professional to color your hair or even for um, you to really get adequately washed and even for the moisture to really get to where it needs to get to. So that's, um, that's, that's huge. So you're saying that sometimes you think, you think you're getting something that's gonna help you, but really all it's doing is short term. Short term, it's like, it's like putting the, the Band-Aid, you know, on the, the, not really addressing it. Um, and that's, that's a lot of the problem with a lot of different things. It's very superficial. You wanna get to the source of the issue and really treat that hair well. So you can have it and it can move and it can do all kinds of things that you want it to do. Does that make yeah, it makes sense, it makes sense. And actually, I have a question about co-washing because I know a lot of y'all out there, you're like, we all heard about this thing where instead of even bothering to use shampoo, we will use conditioner to wash our hair and then conditioner to condition our hair. How do you feel about that? Only co-washing or co-washing? Well, I do co-wash myself. I'm natural myself. Um, however, I still do use shampoo. So when I'm wearing my hair natural because my texture um, is finer, it's, mm -hmm. it's very similar to yours, Kara. Um, a lot of the Oh, times... we never got to see the, the curly hair. Oh. Oh, there we go. This is the texture. Oh. You see. Can, okay, camera, can we zoom come in? in? Come in, camera. Okay, can I say about this hair, the, the, the bits that have been... Oh, sorry. <laughs> the, I noticed, so come in, camera. Oh my gosh, my hair looks like a jerry curl. <laughs> That's one sexy jerry curl. That's one sexy jerry curl. I'm noticing that the bits that have been colored, lighter colored, seem a bit straight. That, you know what? The lighter you go, the looser the curl pattern will be. Oh, so if you light, if you color, if you color your, it affects, okay, so coloring affects, so this, I shouldn't look at the light bits, I should look at the bits that are not so, not so. They're, they're all mixed in there. Yeah. It's pretty subtle, but yeah. And even, okay, this is another thing to point out, beside this side that's already combed out, guys, I'm paying any attention to that. Yeah. But on this side, we see how her root, like, the texture is a lot tighter. That's typical for most of us that have natural hair. And then as we go toward her ends, it's looser. And a lot of that isn't necessarily heat damage because she doesn't really do much of any heat 
work to her hair at all. It's really just, as your hair grows and there's more weight on it, it loosens, mm. right? And so when it's shorter, now the weight is off of it, and then it's gonna be a little tighter. Plus, this hair is newer. It's just newer. It's like, hey, I'm alive. I want to do something. I want to curl. And this hair is like, oh, I'm just tired. I'm just tired. It's been so long on my head. So um, that's kind of what's going on with that. But she has different textures all over. And that's every natural girl that I see may have straight hair here, may have, you know, a tighter curl here. It's just all different. And this is the big thing. Embrace it, whatever it is, like, because it's you. So. Yeah, so I got that. So in fact, so we're combing out the hair now because we're about to go straight. We're about to, yeah. Yeah, so we're combing out, the, we're combing out the natural. So you see, you see it's, 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 we've combed out here, I'll just show you. Yeah. See, but then the back hasn't been combed out yet. Has it been combed out? No. No, so the back is like, the back is like there with a vengeance. Tiffany, you show, show the camera. Show the camera. Yeah, what's going on with the back? Something's happening there. You know, but you see once again the difference in texture. She has a beautiful curl pattern. Get, Carrie, your, your curls are, are beautiful. Um, but yeah, and you can tell she, it's, it's finer. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know where your mouth is. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. But yeah, this is, this is the back. And we see the difference in texture. It's a little, um, a little finer, actually, right in the very back. And can you tell us a bit, I don't know if you know about this thing that I, I see on the internet all the time. Yeah. It's this thing called, like they, they, they separate our textures into uh, one and two and three and four and A and C. What on earth is that about? It's really, it, it really is just about natural girls um, having some sort of guide okay. and, and trying to figure out because there's so many products and there are so many things to do and everybody just wants to know what will work for me. Mm -hmm. That's really what it's about. And someone was genius enough to come up with um, that, that chart and that guide to say, okay, this is what you know, your hair looks like and in my experiences, this is what that texture needs more okay. so than you know, another texture. So that's what that's about. Okay, so that, that's not something, that's something that people are using as a guide. So when you say coarse and fine and medium fine, then they're using one and two and three and four and A and That's, B yeah, and all I'm this going business. By a little different, I'm going by a little different guide. Um, I literally am going by um, the, the strand. What does the strand look like? What does it feel like? Is it fine? Is it medium? Is it coarse? That's pretty much what I'm going by. And then from there I say, how curly is it? And then I can tell just even by wetting, um, how, how much oil I may need. I can tell when you come in and I feel it, mm -hmm. what your hair is, is lacking or what opportunities there are. Um, so for you, with our blow dry, to keep it nice and bouncy and all that good stuff, the only thing that I really use for mascara most of the time is like a leave-in conditioner. Sometimes I use a little oil when she's drier. So you're combing, you're combing. Oh yeah, I have to comb this and I have to section it. And guys, notice how once again, I'm very gentle with her. I don't want her to scream and cry and kick and mom and beat me up because I know she's capable. Um, so we just start from the ends once again and we're working our way up. How many sections? Take us through, if someone's doing this at home, how, how, how are you gonna do it? How are you gonna do this at home and have it look good like a salon if you can't even get to a salon how you go no you know you know it's not gonna, never gonna like a salon but let's say you have to do it at home yeah 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 ain't gonna look you know i didn't even try to do it at home so so i don't even try so so what what are you doing you're separating it into four pieces the, the thing if you're doing your hair at home especially a blow dry it helps for um it helps if you have a comb attachment for your blow dryer as a natural girl because it just saves on a lot of time and a lot of frustration with your arm getting tired and everything else. It's a workout. Um, but you also definitely need to section. Um, the thicker the hair, maybe um, take smaller sections. So instead of doing these four big ones, you could do maybe six, whatever makes you comfortable and just go through that hair in sections. Don't try to tackle it. This is the biggest thing. Um, just all in one because it's just, it could be overwhelming. And then that's when you start taking about two hours to do your hair as opposed to that hour that you budgeted for. So, so you mean actually taking the time to section saves you time? You, yes, it does save you time. Even though it may seem like at first, I'm sorry guys, I'm coming around here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let, let, in that case, let me, ooh, oh, yeah, I'm gonna come okay. around. Cause ooh, yeah. 
um, I, I realized if, so, because we don't want it, we don't want you at home to miss anything. So if the camera wants to come around to the back or your camera wants to be to the side, um, just let us know. Okay. And so, let me just use my left hand to get this mic up to you. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'll fix it. So tell us, tell us a bit more about just stuff you've learned about natural African American, natural black hair. Um, a lot of the stuff I've learned over the oh, that's a good question. Um, honestly, that we're all versatile. We're all very different as far as our texture is concerned, um, and that it's a myth that you have to do things like you know oil your scalp, which actually doesn't help your hair grow. Mm. Um, it's something that hinders growth because it's, it's blocking. Um, and sometimes if you have issues with like dandruff and things like that, it actually makes it worse because the oil makes the skin kind of, um, or the dandruff stick together, you know what I mean? So, so wait, 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 because there are going to be people who are, people, okay, you know you're there at home and you know plenty y'all. You, you're happily using Ultra Sheen, you're happily using Pink Luster's cream, and you're like, what is she talking about in her West Hollywood? Uh, right, in that West Hollywood way. But no, it's very true. You can research it, Google it. But um, yeah, in, in the situation of, we've all been taught, taught, excuse me, that you just, you know, cake that oil on that scalp, and not oil, I mean grease. Yeah, grease. Oh, like you're supposed to rub the grease right. into your, into your, your scalp, yeah. you take it in little sections, you end up looking like a grease ball. <laughs> um, but it's, it's just so not necessary. And once again, we want that scalp to breathe. We want her scalp to be healthy. And the only way to do that is to make sure that it's clean and that keeps everything on point. So I'm actually going to get the product that I'm going to use. Give me one second. Okay, so, so, to, so to you know, I'm going to say, go and have a look at what you're doing. You, we, just, we just went and washed hair. We washed hair, we got the scalp clean, and you notice we haven't put a whole load of, we haven't put anything on the scalp. And you, nothing, and you're seeing how, you see how my hair has been growing like a weed. My hair has been growing, 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 and I don't put stuff on my scalp. And maybe that's part of the reason. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, so now, <laughs> because I've just grabbed it. I am putting on my leave-in conditioner and notice that I'm focusing the product more so on her ends than her root because once again, these, for any girl, no matter what your texture, these need the most love because they've been here the longest. They are drier than your root area, okay? So I'm trying to think of some. So let's go back to the, the grease thing, the scalp thing. A lot of people may think that, oh, well, my hair gets dry. The reason why curly hair, no matter what ethnicity, no matter what type of curl, um, tends to be a little drier is because the oil has a different route to take. That's all it is. As opposed to somebody with straight hair, the oil just goes straight down the hair shaft. So that's why they usually have issues of oiliness, and we as curly girls have issues of dryness. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense to me because I, I'm seeing that if the oil can't get from your root to your ends, you're gonna experience dry, dry hair. Right. And yet, if the oil, if it's just a straight path, your whole hair gets lank and greasy. And that actually happens sometimes with straight hair. Actually, I don't put oil in my hair, but I get the lank greasiness. Well, straight, and, and this is, yeah, this is bringing us back to a point that I made earlier, which is when you, even as a natural girl, go straight, you don't have to do a lot as far as the oils and things like that are concerned. A lot of the time, once again, throughout that week, you may want to protect your ends with something. Um, but Okay, so you see my hair is in four sections, ready to blow dry. Look at these four sections, woohoo! Right, Tiffany's been talking to us about what to do and what not to do. And now, now, the magic is gonna begin. It, it goes down, it's about <laughs> to go down right now. All right, so I'm gonna start with the section in the front. And mind you, all I put on, on Kara's hair, I haven't oiled her scalp, guys. It's not necessary. I haven't, um, I actually, for today, her hair hasn't been super dry or anything like that. I've just used a leave-in conditioner. Now, everybody has their different preferences, but once again, if you're finer, even if you're curly, um, you wanna use something that's lighter. And if you're coarser, you just wanna use something that's a little heavier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes sense, guys? Yes. 
Oh, right. So you've combed, you've, you've combed the hair out. Yes. And so that's why the curls have gone. Yes. Because, you, because Tiffany's gone and combed the hair through and there's product in it now and it's combed through. So it's kind of like sticking together. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So now I'm just going to go in with my paddle brush just because I'm a hairstylist and I can do it and it's easier for me. Um, but at home, once again, if you want to blow dry, we want to use a comb attachment, natural ladies or curly ladies. Um, because it's just easier that way. And you notice, even with the brush, I start closer to her ends than I do to her root, just because I don't, wanna, I don't want to have her in pain at any point. This is supposed to be a pleasurable experience, guys. We want every part of it to be pleasurable and not painful. All right. And we can already see, now you see the color a lot more so. And we see her texture transforming. Don't be afraid to get to the root. <laughs> the straighter your blow dry is, and this is a good tip for you at home. The easier it is to finish with the flat iron and have it look very neat, very professional. Because if you just let it air dry and your hair is super curly and you go to, to flat iron it, it does not come out as smooth. There's, it's just a harder way to go. You don't want to go that route. You just want to make it, keep it simple. So this, So to get that look that you see people having, where their hair is kind of glossy and moving, would you say that having natural hair makes you more likely to have this full head of luxurious hair when you're straightening it or heat straightening it? Listen, okay, I will say this. I'm, I'm a little, um, I'm partial. I, I love my naturalistas. I love my, my natural hair because it does tend to have a lot more bounce and body, however, if you get a relaxer and you get it done professionally, I stress that, then you can still have very healthy hair. You know what I mean? You keep up on those trims, you keep up on those relaxers, and it's possible. So both worlds can have it. I just think, you know, it's natural as We have it a little bit easier, you know. Got it, got it. And so, because there are going to be some women who are at home going, yeah, that makes sense. I'm natural, so that's, that's good for me. But right. there are going to be some women who are saying, look, I have a relaxer, my hair is bone straight, how am I gonna make, uh, just what you said, how am I gonna get that look? With your hair being relaxed? Oh, you can get that easily. Um, a lot of the times, if bounce and body is what you lack, um, doing sets, doing roller sets and things like that will probably be a better option because it's not gonna be, you're not gonna put as much heat on your hair, which if you're relaxed, you really shouldn't. Um, and you're still gonna get a lot of bounce a lot of movement and things like that um, easily. With okay, the I got it, I got it. So basically, if you're relaxing your hair, chemically relaxing your hair, you don't want to put a load of heat. You don't want to be going, ooh, let me bring out my ceramic eye straightener or Every my day. Right. flat iron. Touch it up. No, don't put the flat iron down. It's not the flat iron that kills hair. It's you. The humans. The holding the flat iron. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they can have it too, but sometimes maybe a better option for them is definitely a roller set, a traditional roller set, or a wrap. We're bringing a wrap back. Um, I don't know if you guys remember back in the day, Aaliyah with her little, you know, that swoop bang and that silky hair. A wrap. That's all you have to do. So you're gonna, well, I guess at some point we will see what you mean by a wrap. Yeah. You know, for those of us who, I mean, you know, Maybe we'll do one pin curl and then we see what a wrap looks like so that you can see what you do to take, because we've got three stages. The first stage is washing your hair, getting it ready. Prepping. And you keep, yeah, right, yeah. Prepping. yeah. Prepping and then keeping it healthy. Second stage is actually doing the heat straightening. And then the third stage is having it still look good. I can see you there at home. I can see you sitting down watching this. You want your hair to look good the day after and even the week after, or even longer, if you can stand it, after you leave the salon. All right, so 
what, let me just, I'll try and listen to you. I'll try and listen to you and think, what would you like me to ask Tiffany? What have your burning questions been? Okay, okay, Tiffany? Yeah. What are the burning questions people ask you about their hair? African-American women, black women from all around the world. What are the questions we are asking? The main question is how do I get long hair? How do I get my hair to grow? Um, and I still say it, bottom line is if you want your hair to grow, first of all, you gotta be, you gotta be nice to it. Um, and that just means not ripping it out as you comb it, comb it excuse me, because you're frustrated. Um, but also really moisturize. Really, there's an emphasis on, you can do your co-washes, but once again, even when it comes to co-washing, I still shampoo once a week. And then when I'm wearing my, curl, my hair curly, when I wet it, I can use conditioner and comb through it with the conditioner in and pretty much let it be. But it's still getting that moisture and I'm still usually following up with some type of oil, the oil that's appropriate for my hair, um, you know, at that stage. So it's moisture, 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 condition. Wait, wait, when you say moisture, when you say moisture, yeah. are you talking about the coconut oil you mentioned? Or are you talking about water? What do you mean? Is, water is the first thing. Don't be afraid of water. When you're wearing your hair natural, it's a wonderful thing. Um, and I'm talking about conditioner big time. Invest in good quality conditioners. They make a big difference in your hair. And then second, well thirdly, it would be whatever oil is right for you. So once again, if you're coarser, Maybe something like a shea butter, or maybe something like um, jojoba oil, or something like this would be better for you. So wait a second, because I'm just trying to understand. I'm trying to understand the business of keeping your hair moisturized. Let's say you're in a straight style. Uh -huh. And we've said that we can't put, we're not putting, adding oil to our hair. Right. How are you keeping the hair moisturized during the week if you're not adding oils? Guess what? During the week, are you not wrapping your hair? Are you not wrapping your hair in order to maintain the entire style and all that kind of stuff? So just that within itself, your hair is gonna be straight. Your oils are getting transferred onto all of that hair. So you should be fine. If you experience any dryness, usually it's towards your ends. And you can just put a little oil on your ends if you must, when your hair is straight. But you wrapping it up and it being straight, that takes care of a lot within itself. And then when you go to get your shampoo at your stylist, right, at your salon, um, then you would go ahead and basically get your deconditioning treatment, things like that, once a week, once every two weeks. That's a part of your routine as, a, as someone who gets their hair blown dry and pressed straight. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So, it, so basically, I'm here. Um, I'm waiting the camera to come down. All right, so, so camera, camera's right there. I'm, I'm hearing you at home. I am hearing you. And even though we're not making this any commercial for any products, I can hear you loud and clear. Some of y'all are like, look, she needs to tell us what she means by a good conditioner. What is a good conditioner? And I get, <laughs> I mean, okay, okay. Before I ask Tiffany for her, the brands she loves, if we're going to Walmart or Rite Aid to get our conditioner, what should we be looking for? Girl, you should be looking to go. That's what you should be looking for. But honestly, if you, you don't have um, you know, a crazy budget when it comes to your beauty and your hair care, it doesn't matter. Because you have things like Trader Joe's and coconut oil, which is natural once again, and can be used as a, a pre-poo. You can use it um, once again to, to hydrate your hair, especially if you're that medium to fine texture. It works very well on all textures, but especially from what I've noticed on that texture. Um, wait, 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 wait. Let me get the camera down. Let me get the camera down. Now, when you say pre-poo, oh. we're not talking about bathroom habits. When you say pre-poo, you are talking about something to do with the coconut oil being put on your head before you shampoo, is that correct? That is correct, that is very correct. And that, that um, coconut oil, it doesn't cost a lot of money and it's something really simple that you can do. You just put that oil on that hair. I prefer when it's a little damp, you, you go to sleep in it, you wrap it up, do whatever you need to do that next day even. You can rinse it out 
um, and have hair that is a lot softer, more manageable because now um, it's moisturized. So, it's moisturized. Hold on a second. So, hold on. All right, so I was fixing something with the light. Um, so you're seeing everything, guys. So you're seeing, you're seeing, I'm bending my head down so you can see. Hold on. Got me working on the sweat over here. <laughs> hot. It's hot. <laughs> but yeah, you guys can see how her hair is even at this point. It's not finished, it's not polished. We're at the beginning stages. But you see she has a natural sheen, a natural shine. This is without any product, guys. This is with, once again, just a shampoo. Um, and I use, in my salon, I use Curology. I'm a huge fan of their product line. It's very versatile. Um, it's, it's on the pricier side, but it's well worth it. Um, but there are so many different brands and products that you can use um, for your hair. It's just a matter of finding what's right for you. Okay, so, so basically, you'll tell us more about this Purology business. Or when we say Purology, what on earth that is. Because, you know, none of us may have heard of even the brand Purology. Right, right. You know, so we... And there are certain brands that we always knew, the Revlons, the L'Oreal's, the sexy hair, or whatever they are. Right. But maybe what you're saying is there's some other brands that we don't know that are also quite good or really good. And that are versatile too. I find that a lot of people think that, a lot of people tie brands into ethnicities and that has nothing to do with anything. Um, Purology, Redken, a lot of those different things are brands that literally have universal appeal when it comes to hair. They're for all different textures, all different situations, you know, and, and work well for, you can find something for everyone, basically. Okay, so this is crucial, because now we're seeing that it's not just a chemical you're putting or not putting into your hair, it's also what you use for your shampoo, what you use for your conditioner. But then on top of that, we got this secret tip from Tiffany about even if you're buying a bargain basement shampoo, let's say, you can pre-poo, pre-shampoo your hair by coating the whole thing with coconut oil. And then I'm guessing you, you wash the coconut oil with shampoo? Yeah. You wash it with shampoo um, and then you follow that with your conditioner. That works very well. Um, and once again, you're going to look for, if, if you're a natural lady, um, a lot of the times you're going to look for hydrating products. I do have one, one goodie, one of my favorites that is not very expensive. You can get it at Sally's, you can get it at a lot of different places. It's olive oil. They're these little conditioning packs, and I think they're like a dollar a piece. They're amazing. They're deep conditioners. You can probably get, like, depending on how much hair you have, like one or two uses out of it. Amazing. That's great work. Really? And yeah. it's, it's something like olive oil, we're not sure. And the thing is, depending on what country you live in, depending on what area, you might not have a Sally's near you if you're not in the States. So you might end up in a situation where you don't have Sally's, but you have something local. And this is an olive oil? Yeah, it's, it's called, the brand itself is olive oil. And it's a, I think it's called replenishing pack. Um, but I could be wrong about the name. I just know it's a little package and it's olive oil and it's only a dollar at most. So that's, that's one of my beauty finds that has stuck with me throughout the years. This is great. So basically, I guess the only way for me to do right by you at home is to get a list from Tiffany and I'll call it Tiffany's List and there'll be products that she loves. And as she's saying, there may not even be the products that we know and associate with African American with black hair. There might be products that we don't even think have anything to do with us. But she is, look, if the proof is in the pudding, look at the pudding. <laughs> look at this big head of hair. And then look how I've even put color. I have put a whole load of color in this. So you would think that the hair would be dropping out, wouldn't it? Exactly. But the hair is not dropping out. It's growing. It's growing like it's growing. wildfire. Look at that. We're about to, so this is, this is a big one, all my, all my sisters, all my ladies. 
Um, so trims, it's very important you trim your hair. No one is exempt from it. No. There is no product on the market that is going to take care of split ends. There may be some things like once again, your oils, keeping it moisturized is gonna help it to not be so dry and not split because that's what causes the splits. But you're always gonna be, you're always gonna have to get a trim. It's inevitable. Um, most of my clients are on a routine of every eight weeks Every eight weeks. A good trim. Okay, so basically, I'd love the camera to come around. Come around. I'd love the camera to come around to see. Come on, camera. Catch up, camera. I'd love the camera to come around and see. We're going to look at the hair before and after the trim. Exactly. So you can see all her length. And you can see, once again, I've had the trauma of someone saying, oh, I'm going to trim your hair. And my hair was all the way down here. My trim ended up with my hair all up to here. So that's not what a trim is as a haircut. Um, but I'm going to show you the difference today. Because a lot of us, we think that our hair isn't going to grow if we cut it. But if you don't, it just splits up and it just looks raggedy and there's nothing you can do with that hair, you know? So camera, let us know just by nodding. Are you seeing the full length of the hair? Just by nodding, camera. Okay, okay, so, um, all right, so now we're gonna start a trim. And I'm just sectioning her off because uh, it makes sense. Okay, so, so I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get camera to come around here. Or actually, maybe maybe you want to come wherever. Sorry about this. Sorry about this, guys. Sorry about this. I just want to put put the light so I so you can see because it's this is all for you. And if you can't see anything, look at Tiffany's. Tiffany had some. Tiffany had a birthday. <laughs> Woohoo! I already I already ate out all Tiffany's delicious things. Her cousin sent her a lovely fruit basket. Another person sent her pineapples covered in chocolate. Boy, that was tasty. Woo! Can't wait for Tiffany's next birthday. Her relatives sure are generous. Woo! Thank you, cousin. Huh? Andrew, hey. Shout out. <laughs> that, was, that was my ratchet moment, guys. I'm allowed. Even in West Hollywood, it's okay. Yeah, ratchet. She ratchet. I'm about to put this girl on Twitter. She ratchet. <laughs> Woo! The, you're at the life of the part, but kid with you. All right, so let's start with your trim. So I'm going to section you off. And once again, a trim, listen, people, um, you can't do a trim yourself at home. Um, I know we all like to think we can, um, and you can do what you think is that, but it, it, you're really not getting down to the issue. And I'm going to tell a lot of my curly girls, if you wear your hair curly all the time, you can in fact, um, you know, trim it while it's in that curly state. However, if you like to play around with straight or wavy or, you know, if you're not the person to wear your hair curly all the time, you want to blow that hair out straight so that you get more of a clean and even concise cut or trim, whatever you want to call it, um, because it just works out better that way. Otherwise, you'll have pieces up here, down here. If you cut it for curly and you want to wear it straight, it's just not going to work. Um, and you can't get to the back of your hair like I can as a professional. Um, so just don't try it yourself, guys. It's, it's not the, the best thing to do. Um, and I'm just going to go over here and actually grab my shears. Okay, so I have a question about this, uh, the sure. shears business. Because, so there are going to be people at home who just want to trim it themselves. They're going to do it. We, you can't stop them. You know they're going to do it. Girl, you know one of y'all are out there watching. You know you want to trim your hair at home. So, Tiffany, if somebody is trimming their hair, tell us about something like, the shares need to be sharp and stuff that, let's not make a disaster out of our homemade trimming. Listen, I'm just upset by the homemade trimming. I'm just <laughs> saying, oh my God. Um, but yeah, they definitely have to be sharp. Um, if they're dull, you'll end up causing more damage um, and you'll end up with more split ends and dryness because your shears are, are, um, are dull. What do you mean? Why, why? Uh, there's a lady at home going, why are my dull scissors going to cause me more split ends? Tell me. Uh, the friction. The friction in the pool that you end up putting on that hair, it's going back and forth. It's not able to do a clean cut. So now um, you're just you're just literally making the problem worse and you're aggravating that and now they're open and expose your ends. And nine times out of ten, 
you're not moisturizing like you need to, and it's just a bad situation for everybody involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Does that, yeah. Yeah, that answers, that answers the question. I, I won't turn because obviously I'm gonna stop that turning business because I'm very aware that you are trimming right now. Yeah. Mm. We don't wanna make any mistakes. Okay, so with Kara we see um, that, you know, this is, this doesn't do anything for her and we need to get rid of that. And that's just, um, it's not heat damage, guys. It's not um, anything about friction for her. It's literally just maintenance um, and maintaining her, her actual length. Um, her hair is gonna, gonna grow like this in like a matter of a month anyway. Her hair grows super fast. Um, but yeah, we always have to take care of this. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do my thing here. And Kara, can you put your head down for me? Okay. And really, there's a question I'm sure lots of people are asking, which is, <laughs> you know there's some of y'all at home who are like, I do not plan to cut off even an inch. I don't care how long it's going to grow back. What do you say to somebody who is like, I don't want to cut my hair at all? How is, how is it going to affect them if they don't cut even these split ends off? Honestly, um, and, and I was one of those girls. It's, it's even to this day hard for me to get a trim, uh, realistically. But um, the only thing that ends up happening, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people have had this happen or have seen this, is those ends just split up and it all looks like dry and it looks sparse. Your ends start to look a lot more sparse and your length doesn't really exist because it's like you can't see it. It just looks like, like a, a broom. Like somebody, chew, you know what I mean? You're just always going to have that issue. And when you go to straighten it, when you go to curl it, it won't do anything you want it to do because it, it no longer has any life left in it whatsoever. There's no bringing it back from that point. So you can try not to have a haircut all you want to, um, but it's not going to even resemble anything close to any kind of good, sexy hair because that's what we want. We want that, uh, what, who, who's a good uh, hair person? That Michelle Obama. Go Michelle! That Beyonce. Nah, man, I love Beyonce, but I mean, we, yeah, we ain't talking about lace fronts. We talking about hair. Hair, hair. We want, we want things like that, that, give me somebody else. Who do we know? Who's our hair crush? Who do we have? Okay. Mm. You know, it's really funny. I feel like I'm my own hair crush. Come into, <laughs> come into <laughs> Tiffany, come into <laughs> Tiffany. I am my own damn hair crush, right? right? And when I got my hair colored, when I got my hair, let me cheekily look at you. Let me tell you, when I got my hair colored, it was like I was a new person. I was somebody who didn't really, yeah, right? Yeah. Because I didn't know I could be the kind of girl that would put color in my hair. I guess I thought that was like a wild girl. Ooh, who's putting, making their hair lighter, you know what I mean? I did it and it was, and, and my hair grew. After doing that hair color. Which everybody says, oh, you can't do. Which they say you can't do. My hair grew like wildfire wildfire my hair started to grow even more partly because you can see the roots growing out the color you know yeah and and so um you just want to let me see here i'm so sorry oh yeah sorry could you yeah I'm turn you this way if you want are you ready to see this awesomeness happening mm -hmm. can you tell us also now that we're talking about color can you take me through the difference between you know coarse, medium, fine hair, and so each strand, and coloring hair, and then also why people say that coloring is supposed to damage your hair if you're making your hair lighter. Um, well, this is a secret. Um, coloring your hair does, it is some sort of damage. Brushing your hair causes damage technically. Everything that you do can technically cause damage, to be honest with you. Um, but it's all a matter of, when I'm a professional, I know what you're gonna lose in the process. I know that you're gonna lose some moisture. I know that you're gonna lose, in coloring, some proteins. And the lighter you go, the more you lose. So I then have things in my arsenal um, to protect your hair and to help it to still feel like hair and to really treat that hair with those proteins and with those lipids, those oils that I know you're gonna lose in my coloring process. And that's the reason why you don't just go to the box um, and, and expect these fabulous results because um, it's a lot more drying, it's a lot more harsh to the hair. And when you are making that investment in color, you want it to be right. You wanna still have hair on your head. And I think a lot of the times people say it's so damaging because 
Um, maybe they've had an experience where they have done it and their hair has gotten drier um, and it's broken and it's, it happens. Um, but once again, that's up to your stylist. Um, Oops, I'm trying to get a light on you, sorry. Oh yeah, and I'm trying to make sure I, I do you justice over here. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you just want to make sure that you are, when you're getting any kind of chemical service done, I stress, even on a budget, you can always find a stylist and you're at your budget um, that you get it professionally done. It makes a huge difference because guess what? If I jack it up, that's me. There are, there are a lot of guarantees and I won't jack it up, don't worry. Um, but if, if you do it and then you come to me to fix it, guess what? It's a lot more money. It's a lot more time, and then a lot of the times there, there you get what's called a chemical cut. You know what I mean? Because now the, the issue is just going beyond where it ever needed to go. But color is a wonderful thing for us to explore, especially as black women. You don't see a lot of us getting color. Um, and I just, you know, there are certain stereotypes and stigmas associated with it, but it's a wonderful thing. What, what do you mean, like stereotypes and, and so on? I mean, I know because I was one of the people that didn't get their hair colored and I was doing it because I didn't necessarily want to be a wild gal. Well, exactly. You know what I mean? And, and I thought... It's bourgeois. Or, or a lot of the times I really think it's just fear. It's just fear of what it's going to do to my hair, whether or not my hair can take it, um, things like that. Well, and, definitely. Yeah. I mean, for me, for me, I mean, I'll say, you know, for me, it was definitely... What is it going to do to my hair? But also, I wasn't thinking about Miss Bourgeois. I was thinking, literally, oh, putting color in my hair, only the kind of wildest wild gal. And actually, putting color in my hair helped change my personality a little bit because I was like, ooh. You came out. Right? Yeah, I'm on a wild side. I came out of myself. Like, I felt like I, I'm on the wild side. If I'm putting color into black hair, into why, into. It makes a statement. It definitely makes a statement. Um, and it's, it's something that you could use to help to express you in a different way. And a lot of times, you know how we as women, we get bored. We get tired, we're like, oh, do I change the cut? A color is a great way to not only enhance your cut, but just to give you a different look, you know what I mean? Without even having to go as far as chopping everything off or something like that. So it's just great to work that into the repertoire, into the routine, um, another option. And we're just snipping. Sorry, Ooh. a little awkward angles, but that's all right. You can work with it. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about this. I don't want to affect the snipping. And I'm here making sure that the camera can see everything because it's all for these wonderful. It's all for you at home. This is all for you at home. Oh, sorry. <laughs> this is all for you because I know what it feels like for you to. Ooh, let me just make this go lower. Hold on. Camera, yeah, this is real. This is the real deal going down right now. Yeah, Kara is letting you in on all her her beauty secrets, her hair stylists, all of that yeah. good stuff. This is what this is like. There's no nothing. This is what really happens. Yeah, this is this. You are getting. You are in on it. There is nothing that is being hidden from you. And in fact, Tiffany just shared the business of that pre poo, that pre shampoo. I didn't even know about that. That's like a little hot little secret that Tiffany had. I, I, so, all this time. All this oh. time. All this time. It's a good thing I just came and ate out her birthday chocolates. I'm kidding. I, <laughs> I'm really sorry. <laughs> I can't believe I did that. I'm quite ashamed. <laughs> and then I begrudge. She's quite ashamed. Yes, she did it. All right, girl. We're going to share the economy. I can't oh. No, seriously. You don't even know. When you gave it to that other patron, that lady. I was like, Lord, man, boy, no, but um, you at home, I know this is serious business because I have gotten, I've gotten messages and I know that there's some pain sometimes when you feel like your hair is breaking, it's not growing, or you put a color in yourself. Okay, so now, you see those of you at home who are like, you know you're the ones with the boxes and you are doing your hair color at home, but you're really worried about breakage and you're doing stuff at home anyway and you want to talk to Tiffany about breakage, let us ask her. Even if we've gone against her advice. Come on, Tiffany. <laughs> <laughs> um, nine times out of ten when you're seeing a lot of breakage and things like that after a chemical service, whether that be color or relaxer, your hair 
is in need of some protein. It has to get some strength because that's what protein does. Um, and it also is in need of moisture. So those two things are essential. So you're gonna go out and you're gonna buy yourself some amazing deep conditioning treatments that you're gonna do probably at least once a week until that hair is, is stronger and healthier. And you probably, depending on how bad the situation is, you probably want to get a healthy cut. I know nobody wants to hear that, but it's, it's the truth because there's nothing that's going to bring that, that tremendously damaged hair, that stuff that's just falling out in the sink and just terrible. You know how, you know that sad, that sad face is everything because it's the truth. Um, nothing is really going to bring that back like that. Those pieces that are up here and down here, there's no point to try to save it all. You can treat what you do have if it's not too bad. Um, but once again, we just wanna, we wanna let it go and let some healthy stuff come back in. Um, and that's just the truth about it. There are no, sometimes the answers that we, we get aren't the ones that we like. So, so just cause of camera, camera, come in and this. So basically, just in case you're like, what? Cause I don't, I can't believe what she just said. She's saying that there's a, you know when you've just got a, let's say you get some chemical treatment or something happens and the thing has not gone right and your hair is coming out in the comb, in the sink. And like Tiffany said, it's not shedding where it's long hair, long pieces of hair. It's little bits, little short bits. It means your hair is breaking. And what Tiffany is saying is when it's reached that stage, you need to do a chemical cut. You need to do a cut to get the, the old out and then prepare for the new. So what would the new be? If you want your hair to grow and you want to be like, is the new, is the new just not, is that, is that, or our phone, this is so real. Our people are, people are hitting Tiffany up. This is so real, the cell phone is on. Whose phone is that on, on silent like that? What? Well, on silent, so posh, look at you on silent. Mine is a big Rocky theme tune. So what, how do you, You've got your hair, you've just had to cut a load of it off because of what's happened. Yeah. You talk about protein and giving your hair protein. I tried a, one of those reconstructing conditioner one time, or a few times, and every time I try it, my hair comes out in bits. Yeah, so you experience more breakage when you try the, okay, so this is the thing about protein. Um, and every product isn't going to be the best product for you, but um, a lot of the times it doesn't necessarily make your hair feel very soft and commercially, um, you know, that, that hair that we all want and it flows and all that kind of stuff is literally meant to build strength into your hair. So it might feel a little more coarse than usual. That's the reason why uh, we want to also integrate moisture into the situation and sometimes that may call for additional oil that may call for um, even olive oil I don't know why I, I, I didn't mention that before for um, heavier texture um, or, or coarser texture excuse me um, you can add that into your your conditioners um, I want to start throwing brands out there but I don't know okay you know what people want to hear your brands but we the thing is though don't just tell us the high-flying expensive brands. Oh, you know what? Let me not give you too much attitude as you're cutting right now. Oh, cutting. I'm done with that part. Oh, you're done with that? that what? We're doing the heat yeah. part? We're doing the heat part. What? No, people want to see the heat part. Okay, okay. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Do, do we want to see? Okay, so I have to say this because this is one of my best friends. Yeah. Um, this flat iron, I call it baby list. I don't know how you really pronounce it, guys. I'm, I'm not that um, Hollywood. But this is amazing. It's good for um, a lot of textured girls. If you have um, sometimes very curly, very tight or coarse hair, every straightener does not work. Sometimes chi never got me the results that I really needed. Um, so this- Chi, what's chi? And what does textured mean? Does textured mean people with curly hair? Texture just means exactly, people with curly hair. And sometimes, once again, when you go into coarser textures, meaning the strand itself is very thick, um, the curl itself is very, um, very tight. We need something that's going to do the job and going to get that hair smooth and straight um, without any kind of issues and pulling and tugging and all that kind of stuff. So this is my fave and so many hairstylists love this. So that's my, that's my tip. What kind of baby list one? What's the model number? Oh, well, I don't know about that, but it looks like this titanium, um, nano titanium pro. I believe that's the name of it. Yeah, we got a close-up of it. And you see the titanium plates. Um, you have temperature settings, on and off button right here, temperature settings on the side. 
um, and you can just adjust that according to um, the fabric that you're working with. Now, I don't need to turn it all the way up because once again, Kara's hair is not, it's very fine um, and it doesn't require a lot to be straightened. You can already see what her ends look like just after a blow dry. So I'm gonna actually turn her down. You heard of the turn up, now we're turning down. And that's um, 400, okay? So we're just gonna go ahead and start with the process of um, smoothing Miss Kara out. And this is the, this is the fun part. <laughs> so, so I mean. Get that kitchen. I'm sorry, I said. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I, like, like, I have a question because it's like, what happens if it's too hot or not hot enough? If it's not hot enough, you're basically, um, and I play around with that myself. So if I want that hair that is smooth and straight, yet has still a lot of volume, um, and I'm not gonna say texture, it's smooth and straight, but it just has more volume, um, then I'm gonna turn it down. I'm probably gonna use something like um, 350. And once again, this is one, depending on how hard or how smooth you want your hair to be. Now, if I want a very smooth, straight day, then I'm probably gonna turn it up to about 450, maybe 430, um, because it, I know it's gonna give me that um, and it's gonna last for me. So if you want, it just depends on what you want. Mm -hmm. Honestly, you can change temperatures and get different looks, because I like to play around with that with my hair too. So does it, does it last longer if you have done it hotter or does it just make it shinier? It makes it shinier and it makes it um, less voluminous. That's Ooh. what it does. Okay, so if you want your hair to be like um, sleeker or thinner, then you, you go really high heat. But if you want that big body, and in America people like the hair with body, then, then you low, lower heat. Exactly. So people are going to want to see this. So I'm guessing camera, if we could just literally I'm gonna move the light. I'm and see how we get the... Yeah, so you're going to talk about... Mm, so once again, even this I'm taking in sections and I'm sure you guys out here, you, um, you smooth your hair in sections and you see how I'm getting really close to her root. I'm just tapping and I'm allowing the flat iron to really do the work for me. I'm pressing on it. This is what does the work so I don't have to get tired and keep on smoothing over the same piece. Now this little section down here, I kind of just, it's almost like you tap it to get all those little pieces in the back. I don't know if you can. We don't want to burn. We just want to we just want to smooth it out and make sure that um, she's just polished in every way from the front to the back. Straighten out all the so did I burn you? No, 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 not at all. And we see that hair once again, all I used on her was shampoo, conditioner, and leave-in conditioner. Um, and this is what we get. Like literally, that shine is like crazy on her hair. And as we go along, you're gonna see that um, her hair is going to move. I didn't put a whole bunch of oil on it. And once again, this is for any girl, no matter what your texture. Some people, like I said, it depends if your hair is super dry. I would incorporate um, and oil into the blow dry, but for Kara, it's not necessary. She has um, a softer texture. The oil is going to get there, and she's not going to see me for a few weeks. So I already know by the time she comes in, her hair is going to be oily without her doing anything because it's straight. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So if I'm understanding correctly, it's the, and I don't know if you can see me in the, maybe, ah, I can see the, the maybe in the mirror. Oh, no, you can't see the mirror because they, um, basically, so when, the, when my hair is heat straightened, the oils are coming. I've, you know, I spend so long not coming to Tiffany, not doing anything to my hair. I actually comb my hair with my fingers. I don't even bother. I'm, I'm even funny. Like I, you know, comb my hair with my fingers, do nothing much. And then I come back and as Tiffany said, the oil has gone from my roots to my ends. You know, it's like a and, self. And let's just say, let's put this out there because we know Miss Kara does not wrap her hair yeah, every night. You know, true. so well, um, in my way, which is it takes three seconds. How do you do it? Oh, I mean, so give your secret. It's all right. Okay, show show how I wrap it. No, no I can't show yet. Yeah. We'll do it. We'll do I it. When it's it. done. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, I like the sound of that. I did. Do that Three again. Three <laughs> seconds. Three seconds, but I know it's not effective. <laughs> <laughs> but I know it's not effective. You know what, but it's your way. No, 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 because when I did the pin curls you showed me, yeah, it was amazing. And it, it was, lasted for a while. Oh then. gosh, I couldn't believe it. It looked like, it looked like I was going to the salon every day. Yeah, exactly. And that's another thing, guys. A lot of people, um, you make the investment in your hair, you want it to stay, um, and that's usually a big problem too. So all my ladies that are going through menopause and things like that, and you're going through sweats, and you still want to get this straighter look, um, one of the things that I tell my clients, besides wrapping your hair, um, is you might want to start thinking about things like keratin treatments, um, if you don't want to go the relaxing route, um, depending on so, your situation. Wait, when you say keratin treatment, right? When you're saying keratin treatment, you mean like a Brazilian blowout or a Japanese straightener, that kind of thing? Well, a Japanese straightener is a lot different than um, your traditional keratin treatments, but yeah, Brazilian is, is one brand. They have so many different kinds. I love the Chi and Virus Straight. Um, and what it does is it helps to make your hair a lot more manageable. Um, your blow dry time is like cut in half. And when you sweat, don't get me wrong, you, you are going to see some reversion, but it helps to loosen up your natural curl pattern. So once again, if you're one of those ladies that, even if it's just you're not going through the change, you're just working out all the time and you know, you want something that's going to help your hair last um, and you're not the type to um, wrap it <laughs> necessarily like you need to, a keratin is a great option for my natural ladies. It doesn't hurt, it helps. It's a wonderful situation. Okay, so this keratin treatment, can you just tell us, because there are people at home, if I just br bring the camera there for a little second, you know, you're at home and you're saying, okay, I know what a relaxer is, I know what a chemical straightener is, the one that we know, like Revlon or Dark and Lovely or whatever it is, what on earth is a keratin treatment and why are the results different from a regular straightener? <laughs> well, there, I, that question is, is interesting. So a keratin treatment is basically, um, every company has a different formula they come up with. And the whole idea is to, um, almost like fill in the holes, right, of your hair, to coat that strand with the product, to have it adhere to your, your natural hair, to make it smoother, um, once again, to make it easier to manage. But it's not, and once again, every product is different, it's not meant to relax your curl whatsoever. It's meant to, um, meaning it's not gonna make it straight, bone straight. The only thing that's gonna do that is literally your traditional um, sodium hydroxide relaxers, or um, like a Japanese straightening, because that's, that's a totally different um, system. But the keratin, great for naturalistas that just want to loosen up that curl pattern and make it easier to maintain their hair. And so, um, I mean, I heard some things like the, the, the hide. Yeah, the, the, the hide That's right, like, 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 like these keratin treatments cause cancer. Listen, the world causes cancer. No, um, <laughs> that's so rude. Um, Honestly, just do your research. Um, ask, go into wherever you get your hair done. You ask them about what product they use. Because once again, every product is different. Um, some do use formaldehyde. Um, it's something that helps to harden the product into the hair. Oh, um, so formaldehyde, formaldehyde, which is that chemical that is used um, embalming in embalming and fluid and so on. A nail pull, okay. So formaldehyde actually has a purpose in this keratin treatment. Oh yeah, it definitely does. Um, or aldehyde, derivatives of um, formaldehyde, it, it literally is meant to um, have that product really harden and adhere to the hair, which is the reason why when there's a higher content of it in the product, a lot of people say, oh, it really did help to straighten my hair. Mm. Um, and so once again, it's up to you. Some people don't mind wearing a, a mask when they get a service done. And some people are like, I don't want to put that into my body and into my life. And mm. that's fine. You, as a consumer, have Google. And yeah. it's a wonderful thing. Just Google it <laughs> and, and see, you know, which one is better for you. That's all it comes down to. I got it. I got it. And so you at home, right now, you can see the progress being made at the back of my hair. You can see the things that are happening. Can you see? I know there's no light for you. I'm going to fix that. 
There's some more light for you. Okay, so you got more light, you're gonna look and see. And can you talk us through technique when you're actually uh, heat straightening your hair, when you're using the flat iron? What would you do for, to have good technique? Um, oh, that's a good question. I, it's kind of one of those things you just kind of do things. Everybody's different. The, my technique is to um, take sections and take manageable sections um, that are, and it depends on the type of hair that I'm working with. Um, and then once I start to straighten that section, I let the flat iron once again do the work. I'm not going over it five or six times. Um, I'm pressing on that flat iron and helping it to get that really smooth, um, polished finish because that's what we do this for. Yes. We want the polish. Okay, so now we're at the top of her head. And at this point, I've been using my techniques, guys. I've been taking my small sections um, and allowing, once again, the flat iron to do most of the work for me. And so, again, I'll put up. It's angles, guys, it's angles. So wait a second, you mean to tell me, if you've got a good flat iron, it does most of the work, but if you haven't got a good one, then it doesn't. work at it. But um, even if you have something that isn't a baby list, um, you may not get the same smoothness, however, you can still get the best result by just, you know, taking and, and going as close to that root as you possibly can. And, and you see how I'm going slowly and I'm letting that heat work for me, that flat iron work for me, and I'm not going against the grape. All right, so let's see if we get kind of turned around. Okay, so we're getting closer to that front. We want to make sure, this is a pet peeve, I know every, um, every uh, sister has when it comes to natural hair. So we all have those edges. You can see the edges. It's just reflective of, you know, our natural texture. We just want to make sure we get it. We just want to kind of get close, put some tension on it. And almost like you're tapping the hair. All it needs is a little tap, a little love tap. There we go. And we're not burning care, we're just tapping and see how smooth and polished those edges now look. Very finished. See the difference between here and here? Yeah, exactly. And I'm just gonna keep on going around. I want her to have a little volume at the top too. So. I'm about to show you guys another trick. Ooh, another trick. You know what? Play close attention. Play, clo pay close attention. Ooh, hold on. It's the helping the camera out. <laughs> helping the camera out. Hold on. Okay, so okay, tell us your trick. So suction. where should we stand to see this trick better? Um, I think you're in a good position. Let me just get these edges again. And once again, I'm just going to take that section and I'm almost just going to tap it out. So you don't have any light coming your way. So so maybe yeah hold on hold on i'm gonna help out the camera wait a second because this is a good trick that's coming around so i need to <laughs> i need us to be able to see it all right go ahead and press out those roots we're tapping we're tapping tap 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 okay and now i need to get back here because this is where the real magic happens Ooh, sometimes when we don't want Oh no, maybe we can move this mat. Peter, if you move this mat for me for a second. Oh, sorry, okay, let me, you know, let me, let me just move it. Okay, hold on. This. Sorry. Okay, I'll hold this. All right, you see, you're seeing the real deal. Everything as is. We are not hiding from you. And you know what, I got to bring this around to the front. So you can, can you move it down? Okay. And then, watch out, because I'm gonna bring this around. Now, right up at the top, I don't want her to be so flat. Um, I want her to have a little volume. So this is one of my favorite tricks for volume and flat ironing. It's just the principle of hairstyling coming up. And what I want to do is I've already taken my section. And you see Miss Kara is due for another touch-up soon. We won't talk oh. about that. We won't, we won't talk about that. Oh. Like, there's like no touch-up with that. Okay. So I'm gonna take this 
and I am going to... When we say touch up, we're talking about color. We're yeah. talking about color, exactly. So I'm going to literally hold this up and away, and I'm going to flat iron it up. And I'm tapping at that root, flat iron it up. So that way, you see what happens? I get a little bit of height here. It's not going to be super flat. That's a great trick for anyone that wants to get um, some volume going on. You can even do curls up here at the top if you want. And once again, that's just to make sure we have a little bit of lift going on. We don't want to be flat. That's not cute. So this lifting up, this you're actually hot, not hot combing. You're using the ceramic straightener and you're lifting up this titanium straightener. Exactly. And you're going up in direction, and it's giving more volume. Exactly. So hold on a second. So you're going up, it's giving more volume. And the reason I'm looking at you, because you at home, you know, if it gets too technical, don't worry about it. Right. I'm just saying, you want to look good. You don't want that little flat, little mousy mouse lady hair. And so this is one of these Hollywood secrets. Tiffany, you know, don't mind how Tiffany's accessible and warm and friendly. Tiffany has dealt with some of the, you know, the top people right here in Los Angeles, in Hollywood. And what Tiffany's doing right now is sharing some tips. These million dollar tips that you wouldn't know about unless she told you. Hold on. I'm not saying you don't know stuff because you know you know stuff too. But she, she really has something going on. Look at what's going on with my hair. Hold on. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're so excited. It is exciting, isn't it? Getting all, getting all ready. Um, but yeah, and I'm just going to continue with this pretty much in, in this whole crown area. And you're going to see the result of all of this in a little bit. And I'm going to even show you, we talked about wrapping earlier. I'm even going to show you about a little wrap. Ooh. We're going to have a wrap story. <laughs> and once again, we see that her roots are straight. They just have okay, so we volume. Need, we need to the camera. Can the camera see this? Can you see this at home? Because it's all about you at home. It is all about you at home. And I'm taking, once again, sections that are very manageable for me to work with. And because this flat iron itself is long, I can carry a lot of hair in there. That's another reason why I like it, to be honest with you. It helps me do a lot more in a lot less time. So, once again, I'm tapping. Tap, tap, tap. I tend to, I don't know if you ever caught it, I tend to kind of like blow on your root. It's such a, it's a thing that I've always done and they, they used to do, you remember back in the kitchen with the hot comb back in the day, used to blow on that hair a little bit. Well, I never had the benefit oh, no, of, no. The <laughs> of the hot comb. I had it, I had it twice. Um, my grandmother did it, my grandmother, my dad's side did this hot comb thing twice and I remember because I went back and my hair was breaking off and mommy was like, what, what happened? Oh, no. no, so I didn't have it regularly. I didn't have it regularly until I got my first, I remember I got a jerry curl back in the day oh. and that's when I was like, oh, that okay. Was it a wave nouveau or was it an actual jerry curl? Well, no, I mean, yeah, mine was a mousse. Mine was one of those, it wasn't really a real jerry curl. It was back in the day and it was like a mousse. Right. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't a real, it wasn't Heartland jerry curl. Oh, well, that's a good thing. I'm glad <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to go through that. No jerry curl. No jerry curl. Okay, so we're coming up on the end of things. And even right here, guys, I'm still using that trick. I'm still holding that hair mostly straight up give her a little bit of volume, a little bit of action. And why are you, why, you're giving the, you're doing this to give volume, to give action, but why do you do the blowing with this steam coming out? What is that about? Well, because it get a little hot. It's getting hot in here, like Nelly said. We don't want to get naked, but. It's getting hot in here. Hi, so I'll take over. Anyway, Whoa. that was ratchet moments. Sorry. Yeah, 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 no, but they, <laughs> you're fine, because you know the thing is, right, we're not afraid to have ratchet moments with you because you, you, you know, we're not even separate. You're here with us right now. You are, yeah, you're here with us. We trust you. So let's just, let's bring some light on there so you can even see better. Boy. We're finalizing things. It's going down. Yeah. Everybody, it's going down. The transformation. So you saw the hair wet. You saw the hair wet and natural. You heard Tiffany's advice for the, 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 the thicker strand, the medium strand, the fine strand. And also there's something which I definitely want to say, which is 
no texture is better than another texture. Very true. I like that you said that. It's so true. And own your own texture. Everybody has different things that their hair can do as opposed to another. Um, I know for, you know, just as well as I do, when you have softer hair, mm. uh, it doesn't want to hold a curl. It doesn't want to do anything but be soft and misbehave. Yeah. Uh, be soft. Don't even look like nothing. Right. Don't keep hold a curl. Right. Just like, just look woomph. Nothing's right. happening. Right. And that, and it is what it is. But you have someone with, my sister has gorgeous, thick, and her actual strands are very thick there. It's, she has coarse hair. Yeah. But she can keep a style. Oh. It's all done. It's just thick and luxurious and just gorgeous. It's honest, honestly gorgeous. So back to what you said, embrace your texture, love it. Um, yeah, that's okay. yeah. I mean, yeah. the best embrace texture. It. Yeah, em embrace it because that's the thing. Sometimes people people have us conned into thinking that there's good hair. Let me tell you, no such thing. No such thing. Good hair is hair that's being healthy. Yeah, right. That's healthy, and it's, and you know what, healthy hair too. I have to say, guys, it starts a lot from what you put inside because whatever you put inside, you get out. That's like right. It's inevitable. So you gotta you gotta put you know good healthy foods. You gotta drink. Water is your friend in so many ways, um, and it does it just helps with everything. So you hear this? What you put in your body, water is your friend, and all the nutrients. And I'm gonna do a video, guys, where I take you through some of the nutrients, some of the you know, yeah. you know the the grow your darn hair. What you put in your food? What what grow food you put in the plate? It. You oh. grow your hair that right, right, right. <laughs> I once put a post up that said any of our hair could grow. And, I, and some, one lady who was actually a nun, a nun, um, a woman of color just like us, but she was like, oh no, you know, almost God has said that our hair doesn't grow. So why should we challenge that? I do not believe for a second that God said black women's hair don't grow. I think... <laughs> I'm sorry, I missed that part. Right, well, you know, <laughs> I, I was there, I was looking at the messages, and I was like, okay, this lady genuinely believes our hair doesn't grow. So I put a picture of Lil Wayne. And not because Lil Wayne is so cute, because I don't think he's that cute, but I wanted to show you how people with locks can have their hair grow into their behind. Our hair grows, but we do stuff to it that breaks it. We do stuff to it that doesn't, is not conducive to having the hair stay on our heads. This is very true. This is very true. Exactly. And that's a good point to make. And now, we're going to literally just finish you up. So, okay. um, I like to do what's called a dry wrap. This is going to help to, I don't know, just get my hair, because now it's, it's very clean. It doesn't want to stay in place. But this almost helps it to go in the direction and into the style, the ultimate finished style that I want for Kara. See, I want you all to look at this carefully because this is where I go wrong. <laughs> Wrapping your hair isn't just putting your fingers in and make it go round. You use a brush and you go all the way around and you then tie, you can tie a scarf on it to exactly. sleep. This is, the, this is the way you do it to keep your, your hair, guys. Um, from getting too frizzy or crazy. When you wrap it, it's going to follow your, your head form. Mm. And it's going to literally just lay like you need it to. And I'm not going to put a whole bunch of product on it, but this is, I guess, what you call it, a dry wrap. I'm just going to continue. A dry wrap. How does this compare with pin curls? Oh, well, pin curls are totally different. When your hair, if I were to curl your hair or something like that, um, it would just give you, this gives you a straighter look. Mm. The pin curls give you more of a textured look. I'm desperate to have it curled though, only because I can't, I, I can't live with that, that straight look. I can't live with it anymore. With it. No, I really can't live with that straight look. I, 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 like, it kills me. Like I really, that just straight down, just look like that. It doesn't do it. No man, no, no. And I know that for you, you want to see that bounce and that gorgeousness. And I, you know, yeah, I discovered this thing. I mean, Tiffany showed it to me. And, that, and when, I'm, when I have some kind of manners and shame and actually I'm looking to look good, having those curls and then the pin curl to keep it going so you can keep the style going for days or weeks, even if your hair naturally doesn't keep a curl, it's priceless, priceless. <laughs> All right, so, all right, so, um, so we see the volume, mm -hmm. we see the, the layers, we see hair, hair is moving. So, yes, yeah, yeah, so you see the hair, I, I want to show you the hair is moving. Can you see that, the camera? Can you see 
The hair is moving. The hair, you see this hair is moving and it's thick. Yeah, moving and thick. Moving and thick. And see this hair, one of the benefits of having the hair natural is that it's, it's, it's healthy. And it doesn't have to be. As Tiffany said, it does not have to be natural hair. You can have a relaxed hair if you want to. You just have to make sure you're not applying too much heat and all kind of things. All right. right. And so we got a little swoop action going on if we want to. So now, let me see. Or, you know, a, or maybe, maybe I know it's, we've, we've taken a lot of time, so maybe, maybe today we just do this way, um, and, because it's great as well. Look how, this is great. And another day, Tiffany's the example of curly hair. Look at her. She's the example of someone who's curled her hair. And it stayed throughout the day. And it so, stayed. Yeah. So we got the straight, we got a little bit of curl going on, um, and this is pretty much how to achieve um, good, bouncy, healthy hair. And it look, it's super shiny. Look at that. But we didn't put oil on her hair. And once again, when she comes back to see me, she's gonna have her natural oils that, that would have lubricated her hair and protected her hair um, like nature does. So, yeah. Yeah. You sexy diva, you. Sexy diva, <laughs> woo -hoo! Woo! All right, thank you for being with us. Tiffany, thank you so much for sharing your secrets oh, with us. You. And you know, I know that people are gonna be maybe even asking more questions. You know, hit me up, message me, or just write, and I'm gonna be putting down a list of Tiffany's best products that she loves. Definitely. You know, you guys can check me out on Instagram at Style by Tiffany. I'm on Twitter. Um, at Style by Tiffany, whatever questions you have, seriously, I'm here to answer um, to make healthy hair. We got to have healthy hair. Absolutely. And that's the thing, you know, I'm, I'll be putting all the links and everything in the, you know, below. So just look below this video and, um, and yeah, and you can, you know, write comments and I'm going to get Tiffany to come over and ask, answer things as well. So just, you know, know that you are loved, know that we're thinking of you and know that there's never a case when your hair is the wrong hair, the bad hair, or the good hair, Missy. You know, it's just hair that we can make the best. We can do something marvelous with. All right. Lots of love, and you take care. Bye-bye. Woohoo!